Welcome to Tuesday, the 23rd day of July 2024. This day with a podcast brought to you by Wyoming State Parks. Why wonder about the outdoors in Wyoming? Explore the statewide interactive outdoor recreation wonder map to find your next adventure. Sunspots and smoke. That's what we'll be talking about here at the beginning of the podcast. The smoke far reaching, getting on each side of the Continental Divide. Here's a shot from northern Utah, the smoke and haze moving into the Wasatch Front area yesterday. We'll talk about how long the smoke is going to be around because we do see things getting better. So we'll talk about when will the smoke clear. Subtropical moisture is still around, but it's concentrated. It's going to be over the higher terrain and west of the divide is where the thunderstorms are going to be today and Wednesday. A few are going to be out there but there really won't be that many. We're also going to be looking at that subtropical moisture starting to get a push east, coming back over the divide into Front Range and Plains areas by Friday and into Saturday. That will bring an increase in thunderstorm coverage back into the region. It's going to be getting quite hot, especially for you folks in Montana, Southern Alberta, Saskatchewan, and then into the Dakotas. And then we're going to see some of that heat spreading south as the heat is north the heat will spread south and east this weekend so while temperatures are somewhat moderate in many areas today and wednesday the end of the week and the weekend is going to get quite hot while over the next three or four days northern wyoming montana the dakotas and south central canada there in the pacific northwest you're going to be very very hot so we'll need to watch the heat we also see the cycle repeating itself We'll see this period of thunderstorms and showers increasing again for Friday and the weekend, a lull early next week, and then by the weekend after this one, the first weekend of August, which is typically a time where subtropical moisture is deeper. That's exactly what looks like what's going to be the case by that first weekend of August. So sunspots are visible because of the smoke. Now, for those of you trying to see the sunspots, you gotta make sure you gotta be really careful here. Make sure you have filters, you have eye protection, but with the smoke so thick, the sunspots can be a little bit more visible. So again, be very, very careful. But this past weekend near Deadwood, South Dakota, then in the Casper area, you can see the sunspot activity. Very active sun right now, and we'll segue into what is going to be a geomatic storm watch for tomorrow. Now, it may be hard to see any aurora in the western United States because of the smoke, but there is a possibility, as you can see here from the graphic, we do have a geomatic storm watch for tomorrow. So some of the higher latitude locations of the U.S. and southern Canada might very well have some aurora showing up. Whether or not you can see it is a different situation. The smoke also causing it a little bit easier to have those rays showing up, coming out of those clouds, and just a, a really nice situation there. So the smoke does offer opportunity for some really good photos, whether it's sunspots, the rays, or the other things that you can sometimes see. Speaking of smoke, let's talk about where it is and how long it's going to be around. You can see the source region for the smoke is really coming up out of here. We also have some large fires in the Pacific Northwest, uh, parts of Montana as well. But you can see where the fires are, are most prolific with the smoke and where the smoke is going. This is a great resource right here. If you want to track it along with air quality, bookmark this website. This is where that's coming from. This is air quality, focusing a little bit more in the West. Wherever you see the orange and red, the air quality is getting pretty bad, but in the yellow areas, the yellow areas are gonna show you where you're gonna see some opaqueness in the sky. There's enough particulate matter out there to do things like give the smoke and the haze. Notice though, we have this little wedge right here, right here where we don't have the smoke in place. So this is important because the source region of air, as we're going to see in a moment, is coming up from those higher latitudes to the south. Because of this, the upper level wind patterns are doing this. And that is what's bringing the smoke, is highlighted by the orange arrows there, into the western United States. 
So this low up here is going to start to accelerate more to the east later on. And what that's going to do is kind of cut off the source of the smoke into the region. So will the smoke clear out? Yes. But for today and Wednesday, that smoke plume is still going to be around. But what will happen is on Wednesday, it's going to get a little bit of a push east. So thick smoke again today for most of you. A little less smoke, but still plenty of it tomorrow. However, that source region I showed you where it was clear, the winds aloft are going to start to push in by late Thursday into Friday like this. And this is where we'll be on Friday morning. That low up here heads east. That should produce some rain up here, helping out the fires a little bit. But it's also going to redirect the smoke more this way. The blue arrow represents drier air and also the not necessarily drier air, but air with less smoke. There's actually a fair amount of subtropical moisture, as you'll see in a minute, coming in with that blue arrow. But the blue arrow more to represent less smoke and a westerly flow. So the, the air aloft, the flow aloft coming out of Canada is more directed towards the Great Lakes. So we have today, we have tomorrow, we have part of Thursday. By Friday and the Saturday, the smoke will clear. In addition to clearing smoke, we're going to see an increase in thunderstorm activity. The water vapor loop this morning kind of shows you the trajectory of the air. As you can see, it's coming in like this if you look at the movement. But we also have this punch of drier air coming on in with the westerly flow. That's going to help uh, bring in the less smoke later on. Underneath the gray clouds here is where you're going to see the shower and thunderstorm activity today. That's where the precipitable water is highest. So that's where the thunderstorm activity is going to be, especially in this area here. There you see it. This is the general area where thunderstorms are going to be in the green. Not expecting much in the white. The green areas is where the general thunderstorms are going to be, and it's right underneath those plumes of moisture there. So that's for today. By Wednesday, notice we've kind of got a wall of deeper moisture here, drier air here. So we'll have some thunder here. No thunder here of any consequence, a little bit, not much. So that's Thursday, and that's the Thursday outlook for thunderstorms. Notice the Colorado high country gets into a little more thunderstorm activity, Yellowstone Park, as we get into the day on Thursday. Rather, this is for tomorrow. So for tomorrow, that plume of moisture gets a little further east. By Thursday, a little bit more nudge east. Notice thunderstorms get a little bit more along the divide as that axis of deeper moisture heads east. And that's where thunderstorms are going to be by Thursday. So by Thursday, they get a little bit more east. And basically, this axis, if we draw a line in the middle of it, rotates around to the east. And by Friday, you're going to see that moisture plume get pushed further east. Smoke gets pushed further east. Deeper moisture on Friday. So Friday is going to be an active day in the central Rockies with better chances for showers and thunderstorms, both sides of the divide, and they are going to be rain producers. There it is. So Friday, things are going to pop a little bit more in the region. Temperatures. Wanted to talk about the heat. We have two areas of heat where you'd expect it in the deserts, but this other area of heat right up here in Montana, south central Canada, into northern Wyoming, and the western Dakotas. So this is the heat today. Forecasted high temperatures today forecasted high temperatures tomorrow. Look at that. And the forecasted high temperatures on Thursday. So the Dakotas, Montana, northern and northeastern Wyoming, the Bighorn Basin of Wyoming, you are going to be very, very, very hot. Very hot in the deserts of California, Nevada, and Arizona as well. This area of heat is going to get pushed more like this to the south and east by the weekend. So by the weekend, it's going to get pretty hot down into these areas here. By next weekend, we talked about the subtropical moisture returning. By next Saturday, 3rd of August, the high pressure ridge is more to the east. And this is something you tend to see in August, is a little bit of a push more to the east of this high pressure ridge. What that does is notice the wind flow from the Gulf of Mexico into Mexico, then into western areas of North America. There it is. The subtropical moisture cycle starts up again. So we're going to have an ebb and flow to the thunderstorms. They're going to go away or decrease. We'll have a few days they increase. There'll be another decrease. This will be happening next week with some heat. And then by late next week and next weekend, 
This is a pattern where the subtropical flow could hang around for a few days. So that's going to be around the first weekend of August. And there you can see it. The drier air is right underneath the high pressure ridge. And there we call this the ring of fire. It goes also into the Midwest. So we're going to see an increase in heavy thunderstorm activity up there. That will have to be watched. But also notice the pipeline of moisture comes back out of the tropical areas and around the high pressure ridge. So we'll watch that as we get into the first week of August. Have yourself a good Tuesday. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.